August 26th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Thessalonians chapter 1 from the New Testament. From Paul and Silvanus and Timothy, to the Church of the Thessalonians and God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you. We thank God always for all of you as we mention you constantly in our prayers because we recall in the presence of our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and endurance of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. We know, brothers and sisters loved by God, that He has chosen you, in that our gospel did not come to you merely in words, but in power and in the Holy Spirit and with deep conviction. Surely you recall the character we displayed when we came among you to help you. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, when you receive the message with joy that comes from the Holy Spirit, despite great affliction. As a result, you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For from you in the message of the Lord has echoed forth, not just in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place reports of your faith in God have spread, so that we do not need to say anything. For people everywhere report how you welcomed us and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, our Deliverer from the coming wrath. God, in this letter that Paul is writing to the Thessalonians, he's already seen them, and this is uh, a letter written in response to what Timothy has seen when he went to visit them. And the people in Thessalonians are concerned about the end of times. Are they truly saved? Are they going to receive wrath at the end of the world? Or are they going to receive God's grace? And Paul, in his wonderful, comforting way, is writing back to reassure them of, of not only their place in the elect, but in the works, more importantly, of you, God. Even this first chapter, which is only a mere 10 verses, speaks volumes to how blessed and thankful we should be that we are not in control of our salvation, that it is you that is in control of our salvation, that it is you who chooses us, that it is you who chooses to put the strength and the power and the desire to do what pleases you in our lives. You know, it talks throughout the whole Bible about how those you've chosen, that you will help them along in that walk, that you will fulfill them till the end of times. And the Thessalonians are, are kind of struggling with this as they've just lost some people in this new congregation, this new group of Christians. And how amazing that in the first paragraph, Paul is so reassuring. Um, we came to you as fellow brothers in Christ. So first and foremost, the message you got was pure. Second, did you see how you responded to the message? Did you see how God blessed us while we were there, blessed the mission work, blessed your relationship with him? You have to remember that it feels different now that you are in Christ. And I think about that particular part that Paul is talking about, about how you received the pure message, see how you responded to it. Your life now is different than how it was before. And I wonder if we do that check in our own lives on a daily basis. Is my life today different than how it was before I received my new heart? Am I truly living out the gospel? Am I a walking testimony to the amazing works of God my Father? Do we actually intentionally set our days up for that? And what does that look like? You know, starting your day with prayer, starting your day with being in the word, and then continuing that conversation with you throughout the day, being very intentional that you truly are a walking testimony of who you are, God. I wonder if our faith wasn't um, encapsulated in our works, not meaning you're saved by works, but because of the faith we have, we do good works. I wonder if it was something more black and white obvious I don't know some sort of neon sign we had to wear of when we were intentionally being billboards for you walking testimonies to the power of who you are if we would be better at this um, if we wouldn't let our minds slip to worldly things so easily and we would be so focused on you God 
But instead of a neon sign, you actually give us your armor and you say, I want you to be assured of your salvation. I want you to be constantly talking to me. I want you to be constantly my word so that there isn't a chance for your mind to slip back into the world, for the world to grab a hold of you in that process. God, I just pray for everyone listening on this video today that whatever that looks like in their life, that armor needs to happen. Maybe they need to add more prayer into their life. Maybe they need to start reading the Bible on a daily basis. Um, they know, um, because I know that you'll tug at their heart, whatever peace they need to work on in their relationship with you. Maybe they need to work on how much you love them. Maybe they're struggling with that. Maybe they need to work on trust issues. Maybe that's what they're struggling with. Whatever it is, God, can you just provide in their life according to your will the steps they need to take to grow their relationship so that we aren't slipping back into the world. So we're not constantly worrying, oh shoot, I really messed up today. Gosh, does that have anything to do with my salvation? Am I really saved if I'm constantly sinning um, against God, if I'm constantly slipping back into the world? Allow us to be reassured that you are sovereign, that you are in control of our salvation, and that it is because of the love that you have for us that we desire to be obedient and joy-filled in that relationship. We desire to seek a relationship with you. God, today, just help us to work on that relationship. Paul is such a great example of working on relationships. Um, he constantly stayed in contact with people and it's not as easy as it is nowadays through instant messaging and email <laughs> and social marketing. Um, but he constantly was in touch with all of the people supporting them, encouraging them, um, just being a, in great relationships with these people. So Paul's not only an amazing, powerful example of the theology that we follow, but he is an amazing example of the type of relationships that we should constantly work on, as well as working on the relationship with you, God. Thank you so much, God, for providing all of these ways that we can come into a relationship with you, work on the relationship with you, and the fact that you provide love and security and comfort while we're working on that relationship is just amazing. In your son's name I pray, amen.